Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up? What's up, man? It's Bezo Bezo eight zero through that social media. I got my co-host with me right now. Being Mikey Dollar Sound Mikey, man. We back in the building. Special guest special alert. Special guest, guest alert. alert. Uh, we got the great, the one and only Kenneth Thomas in the building. Exclusive, baby. Exclusive. Great to see you again. Oh yeah, great to see you. Yeah. Hey man, we got one of the Sumter County OGs in the building, legendary in the building. Uh, Big Motion Podcast, man. This is what it's about, man. We wanted to bring on people that was meaningful to the community, that was uh, groundbreaking in the community, um, and that's what it's about. We appreciate everybody else that's been on the show, but the first thought of making this show was to make sure we talk to people that did great things in the community because you guys are like libraries, and if we don't talk to y'all now, nice. you know, who will, when, when and who when, when will they? So we wanted, we set on a task to kind of interview everybody we could that was meaningful to the Sumter County community. And so far, it's been a great journey. And we've met so many people and learned so many things. So we definitely appreciate you for being here, my brother. Yes, sir. One more time. Thank you. You've always been an innovative person, a forward thinker, man. Always thinking about the next thing. You know, some, when everybody else is on this, you on that. Where does that, where does that come from, man? Man, it's in the jeans, family. It's in the jeans. It's yeah. been in the jeans since day one, man. You know. Yeah. I was born with it. You know what I mean? For matter of fact, my mom and dad, well, my grandma and my aunt Beatrice brought my brother a computer when I was just born. Mm. When he, me and him five years apart, by the time he turned 10, he had already put it away. Mm. I went and dug up under the bed yeah. and pulled that computer out. And that's just where it all started out. You know what wow, I mean? That, that wow. became my gift. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. That's hard, man. Wow. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, you know, I know you got many hats, but just name, just go through some of the things that you do, whether you used to do or what you're doing now for the people that may not know you, man. Man, well, you know, <laughs> let me say this, you know what I mean? My love was music. It was music from day one. I think everybody got a love for music. Mm -hmm. um, but my passion was technology and computers. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I got into the, the, to the tech industry back in... 1980, bro, mm. I was running it. So I went through all the er errors of technology back when computers were 8080s and 8286s. Mm. Back when computers was like 5000 for a general computer, which most people couldn't afford. Right. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to have one. And um, Why do you think that was, though? Why was it so high? What do you think that was? Well, it... <sighs> It wasn't new to the market. You know what I'm saying? Computers back then, it, it just wasn't something that people fathomed. You had to be mm. rich to really have one. Only the rich right. people had them. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily, my dad put me in front of the right person. My mentor, God bless his soul, Barry Gettings, um, he took me on at a young age, probably about 9, 10. My dad took me to his house and told him, hey, listen, if you teach my son what, what you know, he can come over and help you get wood in. Um... And you teach him, you know, whatever you need to do. And that's, you know, he took me under his wing <clears throat> as his protege. And he taught me, man. And, you know, that, that that's where it started at. You know what mm, I mean? Right. Word, so, word, word. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So let's take it back real quick. We're going to go through the whole story because I know you. A lot of people know you. But for those who don't know you, we're trying to reach out to the world anyway. Yeah, no doubt. So where you originally from, my brother? Man, right here in South Carolina, I'm from the southern side of town. I would, you know, I guess you know people call it South Side, but we was in the neutral area. Yeah, between Red Bay and South Side. Big shot, Red West Bay, side. South Side. <laughs> you know, we was in the neutral area. Yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah. have no beef in yeah. our area. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what what was life like coming up for you, man? Man, life was great, man. You know, while all my friends was outside playing, man. Um, you know, of course, I was gifted with a computer. For matter of fact, back then. The first computer that I had, it was an Atari 600XL. Mm. Right? Um, and it was DOS-based, so everything you did was basic, basically, you had to put in a code to make something work. It wasn't no graphical interface. Yeah. It was just a black stream with a C and a, and a graded in sign, and you had to type in, run, whatever, to make something work. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? With the semicolon, right? Yeah, semicolons. Yeah. You know what? You know what, bro? Yeah. I was into that stuff a little bit. And uh, I, I got away from it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. I'm lost right now. I, I, I like to hear about it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's where it started at, man. I started playing with that, um, coding with it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, my aunt came along, and she said, you know what? 
I see a GIF in this. I'm going to get you another computer. It was a Tandy 1000. I think it was a Tandy 1000 TL or something like that. Mm. Um, and that book came with a colorful rainbow book full of computer codes. And the thing about it was, man, you know, I used to type out of the book and, and go, you know, line for line. But I mm. got so good to the point where I took the book and pretty much, well, threw it under the bed. And I was coding on the, on the solo. Mm. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And back then when it was DOS... I was innovating and creating shapes and, and, and colors and making the thing play music, mm, you know? Right. And that's where my introduction to music and technology kind of kind of came together because I was making, you know, I was in band, so I knew notes. Mm-hmm. And I was able to put notes in and make it go bing, bing, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was generic back then. So, you know, I was able to do that. And I would show my mom and dad, be like, look what I got. You know, this is, this is something. Mm. I didn't understand. Yeah, right. And, um... You know, from you know, from that man, you know, I just just elevated, man, and uh, went from one computer to another. You know, we went from the Tandy one thousand to the eighty two eighty sixes, and I don't know whether y'all remember sound cards, but it was a sound card called Sound Blaster. That sounds familiar. And when it first came out to the market, if you had one, you was at the top of your game in the music industry. Mm. I remember that man right there, DJ Effect. He can tell you. Big shout, DJ Effect in the oh, building. Yeah. DJ Effect, Vern Large. Free very him. large. No doubt, no doubt. Uh Shock Kim. Legendary. My favorite DJ, DJ Shock Kim. All yeah, right. no, no doubt. They all used to come to the house because back then I figured out how to take them. Back then we had boom boxes yeah. with two record players on it. I figured out how to line the record player into my sound blaster sound card and sample beats. Cause back then we had records, you know, on records. Mm-hmm. On one side, you got the actual songs. And when you flip it over, you got the acapella, which is just yeah. the voice, yeah. and just the instrumental by itself. Mm-hmm. Well, I got smart, and I started sampling them instrumentals in an computer and looping the beats. Mm-hmm. And I started rapping over them. <laughs> and of course, you know, I knew Vern. Vern knew DJ Effect. Mm-hmm. Vern brought DJ Effect over, and they used to come in the room and watch me do that. It's ahead of the time. Ain't no, nobody was doing that at that yeah, point yeah, in time. Yeah, right? yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. You had the bars back then? Man, yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, look how you back on you. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I like, used yeah. to do that. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, yeah. what, what, what was your rap name, man? Um, DJ K Swiss. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, I think it was the DJ. What was it? DJ K Swiss, DJ K Noble, one of them two. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. that was back in the childhood days. Word, hey, word. I wish I stuck with that stuff. The only code I know is Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's hard, man. Yeah, man. For but, real though. Yeah, man. But from there, man, you know. Got with them folks, and of course, Vern, Vern Large, my cousin, you know, she used to live down the street. Legendary Vern Large, we can't skip over that. Mm. Yeah, no doubt, you know what I mean? The Beat Merchant, you know what I mean? The Beat Merchant. The hottest producer out there that I know yet, you Facts. feel me? Um, Hip-hop he used, historian. Yeah, he used to live down the street, right? And his, see, his passion was music. My passion was technology. I remember my dad buying me a, a SK5. I don't know if you remember that keyboard. It's a Casio SK5 keyboard that had four yellow pads on it okay, that could do five-second samples. Got mm. smart, figure out how to put that in the computer, sample sounds, and I was able to use the pads to make beats. You know what I mean? To loop the beats. Boom, boom, pat. You know what I mean? But the funny thing about it was the technology wasn't pre- uh, prevalent back then. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. So back then we had the old-school record players. And because the, the, the beat pads only had a five-second sample, mm-hmm. I got smart and took the record player and took the record and spin the record with my finger to make it go real fast mm-hmm. so I could get a longer sample. Mm-hmm. And back then with the Sound Blaster sound card, they had a um a sound software that was called Sound Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Came with four tracks. Used to do the samples, do the boom, boom, bat, tit, 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 tit. I was doing my thing, and they all came through. DJ Effect, Shock him, all of the boys that used to come through see me do my thing. Um, but again, that was just my love. Technology mm-hmm. was my passion. Mm-hmm. Vern had a passion for beat production. Long story short, and this is where the roads cross. Vern had something that I wanted, and I had something he wanted. Mm. He had a little computer. It was called a Timex 1000. Mm. Little black computer, I ain't know what it was, but when I saw it, my eyes lit up. Mm. When he saw my keyboard with them beat pads on it, his eyes lit up, his soul <laughs> lit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day he came to the house and he was like, Yo, dog, 
He said, yo, check this out. I got this right here for you. I know you like them computers. That's your, that's your gift. That's your passion. You got something I want. That Casio keyboard with the beat pads on it. <laughs> mm. Let's do a switch. We did a switch and we switched gifts. So he gave me that, that, that little computer. I didn't know what it was. So I was forced to go yeah. to the library. Yeah. And that led me into the book of knowledge of technology and computers. Yeah. I was reading up on Bill Gates in the 1989 mm. when he didn't even exist. There was no such thing as Microsoft. Mm. While Vern took that SK500 and he started producing beats. I mean, he was killing it. Called me over one day. He was like, yo, check this out, Kenny. I was like, dang, bro, that's hot. Mm. Long story short, about a week later, he called me. He's like, yo, I done up my game. And I was like, all right, what you got? He said, come over. That man went and brought what you call a MP60. It was a board that had about 32 buttons on it. I'm like, what's this, dude? He said, that's my beat machine. Like, well, your, your keyboard only got four pads. It's got 32 pads. I said, you know what? That's beyond my head. That's your passion. You do you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do computers. And so that's where it went. Now, long story short, your dad was one of my Big first. Big shout DJ Al. DJ Al in the building. Your dad was one of my first customers, bro. Kid you not. Because when I was doing computers, man, I had a handheld scanner about this big. So in order to scan a full page, you had to scan it two times and stitch it together. Mm. A lot of hard work. And back then, computers were, uh, pictures were pixelated, a whole bunch of dots to make up a picture. Mm -hmm. So we'll, it was real grimy. But I figured it out. And of course, I was doing music. So what I did is I created a graphic because I was rapping and making beats. And I made a CD cover for myself and I put it in a photo album. Mm. Along with a whole bunch of other little stuff that I made on my on my um mm -hmm. my computer with my dot matrix printer because back then printers it was big and bulky and when they print they would shake the table yeah um so I made a CD cover for myself and I'll never forget I went to Sound of Something because back then Sound of Something was the, the hangout spot for anybody big who did shout it. Sound of yeah. Something the legendary yeah shout out Levi yeah, everybody yeah. yeah you know that was the spot so I went to Sound of Something. Ran in Al and I showed him the CD cover. And you know how Al is. You know, mm. when he sees something, my eyes get big mm. and he get that big old Kool Aid smile. <laughs> he was like, Yo, dog, how you did that? You could do that for me? I was like, Yeah, I'll do it for you. So, how much you gonna charge me? I told him $10. Mm. He's like, Yo, you got my business. Any CD I do, I'm coming to you. Mm. So, I started producing. Man, he kept me busy, man. He was paying me every week. Mm. And that's when he introduced me to DJ Effect. Yeah. DJ Effect come up in there. Like, yo, I heard you do them all, them, them, them tape covers, because back then it was tapes. Hey. He was like, yo, you could do me some tape covers? Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, I got you. So them two them, them two dudes kept me busy yeah. weekly, bro, with yeah. two or three CD, I mean, Legendary tape Legendary tapes. <laughs> Every week Legendary mixtapes back in the day. Man, listen here, I had so much money going to school from them two dudes, man. <laughs> I was fancy, because them dudes was paying. <laughs> But um, yeah, man, that's where where it all started, man. Long story short, all us got together: DJ Effect, myself, Vern Large, um, DJ Al. Vern was producing the beats. We all collaborated. Long story short, Vern wound up coming up with a group called Soul Out Bombs, with the DJ being Shock Him. The rap artist was what Red Rum. Uh, big shout! Big shout! Spectacular! Big shout! Spectac! Um, and Geechee Rob. Big shout, um, Geechee Rob. And we was the first cats, man. I was in high school. I never forget Vern came to me with the with the record. I ain't never see a record produced in my life by somebody I knew. He mm. came to me with that record and that that lime green t shirt, sold out bulbs. <laughs> you remember that? And he's like, "Yo, dog, yo, check this out." I'm like, "What's this? Who this is?" He said, "It's us." Mm. And I remember going to school showing everybody the the record, yo. This this our group, yo. This our group. Mm. And had groupies out the out the a no man. We used to travel and do crazy stuff, man. Mm. Used to be on the road and whatnot. And that man can tell you, man, we got some crazy times because I used to smoke something called imaginary weed. Imaginary weed, what's that? Man, you got to imagine breaking that that little blunt, really. Yeah. Scraping it out, you know, putting your little bag in there, rolling it up, licking it. But it was all imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the only dude doing that. Yeah. yeah. I was weird back then. Mm -hmm. Never forget, we did a show in uh, Myrtle Beach. It was with, um, I think that was uh, the dude who sang, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, him and uh, I think it was the Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. And we was at a little restaurant. There was this pretty girl in there. And they was all scared to talk to her because she was pretty and she had a girl with her. It's like, yo, Kenny, smoke that blunt. 
go holler at him. Yeah. So I sat at the table. Imagine I was doing my thing. I, got, 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 got. Mm-hmm. I sat there. I was like, and they was even looking. It's like, and I got up and I went and hollered. I was like, yo, shorty, what's up? You know what I mean? Yo, we performing at such and such and such. Come holler at us at the, at the after party at the hotel. And uh, so long story short, we went, we did the show. After the show, we went to the hotel. And that's when my man, uh, I was, you know, he was at the hotel. Dude brought the whole floor. Mm. And the only way you could get to that floor was dude then. Mm. They saw us coming in. It was like, yo, dude, y'all come on up to the floor where we at. Mm. Man, nothing but girls and whoever performed. It mm. was wild. Mm-hmm. It's four, 14 of us in a room. Girls called up. I was like, yo, there's 14 dudes in our room. Like, I don't care. Come on through. Mm. <laughs> Dang. And a funny story about that, you know, I got a Dogeechee Rob in this. Man, we used to clown each other, man. But this was one time he shut me down, man. I had on a pair of shoes, man. He was like, yo, man, you know your shoes look like meatloaf. Mm. Man, that thing hurt me so bad. I, just yeah. I went in the bathroom and cried, bro. Big but, uh, shot Geechee Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But we had good times, man. And uh, Yeah, man. It, it, that's, that's, that's the special thing about it, man. So many great people come from right here, something to South Carolina. Mm. And was really on the cuffs of hip hop and, and music and what was going on back then and, and really technology. Technology right here, man. And, and that's why we wanted to do this show, cause we want to let people know, man, we've been making moves, we've been being innovative, and we still here making moves. You know, that's what this show is about. Yeah. You know, people come in here, they think we somewhere in Charlotte, uh, they they don't know where we at. They, where's, where's the studio at? Right on Broad Street, man. Pull up. You know, so right. we we still here. You know, waving the flag, you know, that you guys was waving and still waving, being innovative, bringing something that people see in these bigger cities right here, you know, to something in South Carolina. So definitely, you know, glad to have you here, man, and, and appreciate all the classic legendary stories. But let's get into your entrepreneur side. You know, everything you said so far, man, you was doing the CD covers and all that. So what was the next thing for you as, as far as business, man, as far as with computers? What was you doing, the next big thing that you, that was really working for you out here? Well, at that point in time, and I'll make this part real short, you know, I, I, after the group broke up, I wound up opening up a computer store um, on Liberty Street. Did real well. For matter of fact, I sold DJ Effect his first computer. Mm. Uh, for matter of fact, I sold him his, his, his first CD deck because back then, DJs, in order to copy CDs, they had to do one at a time. Mm-hmm. I wound up selling my man a multi-disc CD disc recorder. Mm-hmm. So instead of recording one CD, he was able to record five at a time. Mm. I never forget that man called me one day. He's like, yo, dude, I need five of them joints. <laughs> at that point in time, I knew that dude was going to blow up, and he sure did. <laughs> Music trafficker. <laughs> five of them joints. You feel me? Right. So, so I, I, did the, I did the music store. But I saw evolution, and in 1998, bro, uh, I launched my first internet streaming uh, website. It was called Dirty South Going Digital. Mm-hmm. Um, it was literally 10 to 20 years ahead of its time, because when I launched it, we were still operating on dial-up internet. Mm-hmm. I mean, super, super slow. Oh, yeah. It li- yeah, it literally took like three hours to download one song. Internet was that slow. Mm-hmm. Um but I did, I did the internet radio station. I had my listeners, but it was just ahead of its time because people wasn't there on computers yet. Mm-hmm. And they would be like, yo, who's going to listen to music on the internet? That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at us now. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people ain't even had, um, they still ain't had computers like that. They mm-hmm. still ain't had computers. For a matter of fact, there was no internet streaming service before me. Yeah. Uh, LimeWire didn't come out to what? 2002? Yeah. Napster didn't come out to like 2003. Morpheus. Morpheus. Uh, yeah. Spinrilla. Yeah, then I think iTunes came out somewhere. That was a, that was illegal. We talking about the illegal joint. <laughs> yeah, two, yeah, two thousand four, two thousand five. Uh, I used yeah. to be on Morpheus all night. Yeah. I, I used to just like um, I used to go to Morpheus and download all the new stuff, and it might take two days. Yes, yes. And I go back and check it. <sighs> God forbid somebody call our phone oh, while it's down. Oh, it's, it's, it's over. Yeah. It shut what? the whole it's, show down. It's over. You know how many times this man called me? I'm talking about early in the morning. Hey, cuz I'm gonna miss the bus. You left yet? I need you uh, come pick me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm downloading. I'm I'm burning CDs. You know, the hell with the books. I'm Yo. burning CD. I got the one CD burner. 
Yes. I had one and off. And I'm burning shit watching that joint. Yeah. Because somebody said they want the new whatever. And I, I got to have it. I'm trying to mm-hmm. get this money. Mm-hmm. So, man, you know, definitely good times, man, back in those days, man. Yeah. But what, what, like I said, man, what gave you that innovative mindset to even launch such a thing way back then, man? Uh, well, I guess, man, because I'm an innovator. I'm, I mean, I, I literally believe that I'm a time traveler. Yeah. And sometimes, I, you know, I come back to tell people what the future looks like. Mm. And back then, I was telling them the future looked like digital music. Mm. Nobody was hearing me back then because it was just un, un, unfathomable. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I wound up shutting down in the, I mean, Dirty South going digital. Um, and it's continuing with the computers because that's what made money. Yeah. But, um... You know, after that, you know, I got back into the thing and I created a, a a podcast called Pod on Blast. And that was doing well. I had cats sending music from around the country with the $25 check. For cats, mm. Just to have their music played on my on my platform. Dang. But then I had somebody come through and they was like, yo, dude, I got something better than that. I got a search engine. You know, if you can create a search engine, we could get rich. I did that and I mastered the craft. It was a... Uh, Search engine was called doodly.com. Mm. Man, I did so good, man. I was in I was in Google radar. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And me and me and Google kind of did a little The man stuff. created a search engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's fire. For a matter of fact, doodle for Google. That's a that that's the, the image behind the words. Mm-hmm. What do you think that comes mm. We had we had that little tussle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah you know I mean, and pretty much well what they did. Is they just slapped me and told me, listen, we ain't sharing the market with you. We see you coming, and you coming hard. Mm. Told my lawyer about it. He's like, yo, man, don't even worry about it, man. They were $300 billion. Mm. They'll drag you across the country and back and mm-hmm. have you broke. Mm. Just take that as a compliment that they saw you. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's what I did. Mm. You know what I mean? But but nonetheless, you know, since then, man, I kind of, I took the time, man, to, to live life, man, went and moved to, uh, California, San Francisco, mm-hmm. seeking funding. Left there, came back, went and traveled, sightseeing, mopped up living in Texas right. for about a year. And I came back, took a job, man, with the state, man. Did that for eight years, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to take a vacation for myself. It's all good, man. But your boy back. Your boy hey, back. Hey, man, good to see you, brother. Your boy back, and I right. Papa got a brand new bag. Hey, man, let's talk about it, man. You feel me? What's the new thing that's going on right now, man? I, I already know about it, but it's for the people. Well, let's talk about it. You know what I mean? Right now, um, we launching um, a music website. It's called IndieHype.com. That's I-N-D-E-H-Y-P-E.com. Yes, sir. Um, IndieHype.com. It's for musicians. So if you're a musician and you're uploading your music to other sites, you most sites just let you upload and they let you stream your music. But ain't no real benefit. You're just sharing your music. Through Indie Hype, you can upload your music and you can add a price to your, your your tracks and actually sell your tracks directly to your, your listeners and your fans and get paid when they pay you. Mm-hmm. Ain't no getting paid off of spins and royalties that's only paying you point zero zero three 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 cents. Yep. You getting paid per purchase. Word. That's, that's hard, hard, man. And so that's, that, that's very innovative. So that's what oh, we're yeah. doing right now. Yeah, I mean in- artists in- tap in. in. Right. Tap in. You want to get paid for your music? You know, we, we know y'all going to do like Apple that. Music, all that stuff. I appreciate that. But this no is direct yeah, to consumer. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You make the price. I mean, you can't beat it, man. I think it's the way. So yeah. plug the website one more time for me. I want them to get it. www.indehype.com. And you can go on the uh, Google Android store. Um, and you can actually download it from there. You can type in the same same word, Indie Hype. And it should pull it up with the little black square with a red man and the, you know, waves coming out of them. You can download the app. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, collaboration, baby. Man, that's love, man. That's love. That's love. That's love, man. So how, how much is it for an uh, artist or a musician to uh, join? Right now, family, membership is free. Mm. So if you're an artist, you want to Man, go get ahead. in. Get in. You want to definitely get in right now because guess what? This very this this very interview that we having right here, it's a collaboration. You feel what I'm saying? And when right. I say a collaboration, I'm gonna throw a note at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way the giants make it, the way the wealthy make it is, and I'll give you an example. They don't compete with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, it's little 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 young cats out here, um, 
waddling in the mud talking about, yo, you my competition and oh, what you doing is competing with what I'm doing. I ain't messing with you. Yeah. Bro, you waddling in the mud. I'm waddling in the mud. Mm -hmm. Ain't none of us on no billionaire no. Right, So right. what we competing for? The waddle in the mud, bro? Exactly. I'm with you. So I'll say this to anybody out there trying to come up. Kings get with the kings mm -hmm. and collaborate. Mm. Example, Facebook, Facebook and YouTube. YouTube was popular all, for ever since. Mm -hmm. But they ain't as popular as they was until they made a collaboration with Facebook. And right. Let me tell you what happened. So Facebook, they started out, and they had like a little <laughs> medi mediocre video upload. It wasn't, it wasn't all that. It mm -hmm. was just kind of squares and, and, and circles. Mm -hmm. So they got with YouTube, and they was like, hey, listen. You profound in the video uh, area. So why would I go out here and recreate something that you already got? You mm. already doing that. So let's network. Let's get together. You provide the videos. Mm. We'll plug it into Facebook and let people use YouTube to upload their music. Gotcha. And we'll share your YouTube and send traffic your way. Right. Mm. They collaborated and both of them went up together. Oh, yeah. Going in the same direction. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying, you here, I'm here. I'm doing the music site. You doing the podcast. Hey, listen. It's on, man. Let the collaboration begin. You know what I mean? It's I ain't the first it. one, man. We about, to, we, about to, we about to turn it up, man. Definitely. Uh, that's what it's about. We try, and we trying to be everywhere anyway, so. No doubt. It's all it's all about. My, one of my favorite sayings is collaborate, collaboration is power. And I've been doing some, you know, good collaborations with some people around, uh, you know, the city. You know, some didn't work out, some did, but I'm all about being innovative, and that's why I like you, man. I like forward thinking. You know, the Chinese, they they, they forward think, you know. Mm -hmm. We accomplished this today, okay, that's, oh, what's what's the next thing? Yes. So that's what that's what we got to be about. That's the mindset. So, man, we, we definitely appreciate you coming out, man. IndieHype.com, all my musicians out there, man. Anything else you want to speak on before we get about it here? I know the year is new, going to the second quarter. What, what, what is like a goal, you know, for the platform that you got? Well, my goal right now, man, is to uh, obtain at least a million subscribers to the platform. Get in, get your music up. Um, because the platform, like I said, it allows you to make money direct. You feel what I'm saying? Um, it's all about the music, man. There's mm -hmm. artists out here that's trying to get heard. And then you got some out here playing around, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, long story short, and I'll make it real short. You got artists out here competing. I remember going to one artist. I was like, yo, check this out. You know, I got this platform that you can put your music on. I know they ain't know. Mm. It's like, oh, yo, I'm already out there. I'm already well known. That's all right. I don't need your service. Oh, I'm like, all right, yeah, you know what? You keep on doing you. You know what I mean? Because yeah. ain't no such thing as enough. Yeah, nah, never enough. Ain't never enough. If somebody trying to give you exposure, mm -hmm. you take that and get that extra exposure. Right. You ain't talking about, oh, I'm already bigger than life already. Man, he ran a lot of that in South Carolina, man. And we have yet to have a real artist to pop. So I don't understand the mentality, but I, I always say everybody can't go. So we, we what we do here, we connect with people that want to collaborate, that want to work, you know, that want to believe in us. We believe in you. Elevation. Because since we started this, we've reached out to certain artists, you know, for free. Come on the pod, man. Chop it up. Yeah, no doubt. And before we pull out, you know, I got to plug in. You know what I mean? People ask me where my office at. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If I had the time, I would show you, but. Yeah. The new world. Mm. VR, virtual reality. The VR, virtual, baby. The virtual goggles. People ask me where my office is. It's in here. I got a whole new uh, genre of customers yeah. from around the world. From matter of fact, I brought uh, digital real estate. I brought a whole plot of land. Digital real estate. I like I like that talk. Yeah, mm. I, I brought a whole plot of land with about 3,000 apartments and about, I want to say about 100 stores. Mm. In which people from anywhere in the world can come through my, my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They can walk in the store and they can actually purchase that store. Mm. I got a store in there. Right now, it's about gold because that's one of the things that I do. I also sell gold. Mm. Uh, gold and silver and collectible coins. But I'm about to open up another store in there, a music store. Mm -hmm. In the VR space, 
uh, where people in the VR space, they can walk in the store, and when they walk in, it's literally virtual reality. When you look up, mm-hmm. you see the ceiling. When you look right, you see the walls. When you look down, you see the floor on your feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, how does that look? Look, does it look like how what we seeing now is like digital, or whatever. No, it look just like what you see right now, bro. And I mean, really? you got people from all around the world, Alaska, R- Russia, Australia, China, and they just in the world. There's some people who live in this world, literally. They get home from work, they put their VRs on, and they don't come out until it's time to go to bed. Mm. They got clubs in that joint. So it's a whole different world. Yeah, it's a second life for second real, life. for real. So, um, dang. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, they that, got... That's crazy. Listen, Virtual reality. Listen, bro. Meta. They, listen, they got clubs in that joint. That's popping more than the physical clubs. Cats come in I there. I've seen it, man. You can put your clothes, you can dress yourself up. You been they, in there? I've been looking, looking up on it. Oh, okay. They got real I've been DJs, at land bro. Land buy and all that. It's lit. They got real DJs that, that they pay. So DJ Effect can go in there. He can be like, "Yo, I'm a DJ. I want to DJ at your virtual club." Yeah. They will literally pay that man, and he can plug his turntables into the VR. Yeah. And actually play music, and whatever he's playing, everybody who came to that club can hear what he's playing. He could talk in the mic. They can hear him talk. Girls up in there, they dancing, and you can get up on them and dance and talk to them. They talk back to you. Funny story, I got to laugh about this one what? about my wife. I was in there one time. I was in the club and I was dancing. You know, having a good time. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and and the girl spoke and said something, and my wife was like, "Are you cheating on me?" And I was in a uh, a recliner. Yeah. That spins. Yeah. And she got so mad, she kicked that recliner. That thing spent around like five times because she heard the girl voice. We was dancing. I mean, with the with the hands, these right here joints right here. When you put these on, wherever you moving your hands is where your hands is at yeah. in VR, up in the air, down, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can reach out and touch you. You can reach out and touch me, and it feels real. People yeah. going in and really? literally, yeah, they go in there and literally fall in love <laughs> with virtual characters. Bro. Wow, and it feel real, bro. Listen, they got mansions in there. You could go in there and literally feel like you living in a mansion. I got one. Dang. On the ocean front, bro. How 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 the money work? Whatever. Is digital money like Bro, it's real money, bro. It's real money. Cats is eating in that joint. We talking like Coinbase type? No, cash, bro. Cash, cash, cash app, bro. Or whatever kind of medium you want to pay. Yeah. So let's say for instance, you go in there, you open up a music store. It look real. Yeah. People walking down the street see your advertisement in your store window. They walk in, you standing in there with your goggles on. If you walk behind the counter, when they walk in, they see you behind the counter. Like, what's up? How you doing? How's everything going? Oh, I'm just coming in to check you. Oh, you can check out our music selection. They walk over, they can see all the CD covers. They're like, yo, I want that right there. Like, all right, cool. Well, cash at me $10 for the album, and I'll email you your digital download. Man, that's crazy. Mm. That's cash that got clothing stores in that mug. For matter of fact, funny, funny, funny thing. You hear this thing about NFTs, digital art. Mm-hmm. There's cats that's paying $300 for graphics of a Nike shoe, bro. Because mm. cats are paying more for their money, more for their clothes in VR than they are in the in the physical world. Mm. Hey. They buy Gucci suits for $1,500 just so they can put it on their, their virtual char- character and go in the club. Mm. So, you feel me? Man, that's next, next level, level, man. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm a pause on, I'm, I'm a pause on this note. There was one person in there. They are creator. I create a little bit. I know a little bit because that's just who I am. There was one cat, uh, one person in there that came in there, and they went to one of the people that I knew. This person had this idea that Elon Musk was gonna take us to Mars. And he didn't think that Elon Musk was moving fast enough. So he came in contact with, with, the, with the creator. Her name is Arcee. And uh, pretty much what, what happened was he said, listen, I want to live on Mars. Can you create that for me? This chick is bad. She can create anything you can imagine, bro. Anything. Yeah. She created a Mars reality, bro, with a smart home. Sitting on Mars with the red sand and, and the, the rover. I think she, I think she might have created the dude a cyber truck. Mm. Dude paid us some millions, bro, for that. Just because he wanted to live on Mars. And in VR, you can literally do that. 
Damn. Million. It's life in there, bro. It's real life. People are living, doing business, making moves. Do you think that's good for the mind, though? Like the mental? I'll say this. When I first got into it, I got caught up. And I'll be honest with you, for a whole two months, I ain't seen my family. When I got out of my goggles, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. My wife was asleep. My daughter was asleep. I ain't get to say good night to them. Mm. Two whole months. Because I was too bi- I was busy in the VR realm, navigating my way through, making the networks with all the right people. Right. Yeah. But after I did it, I was like, you know what? My family's more important. Let me take these off and put them down. Yeah. And so that's where we at with it. You know what I mean? Man, that's, that's innovative, man. And like I said, you always welcome, man. You a big motion all-star. Definitely. Yeah. You're going to be back plenty of times, man, to build and keep building, man. We, like, we, we collaborate now. and uh, yeah, We're going to talk off camera. Definitely off camera, man. We love everything you're doing, man. IndieHype.com. For sure. The legendary Kendall Thomas in the building right now, man. Y'all better know, man, Big Motion Podcast is what this thing about. We're going to keep working, and we will have my man back on the show. We got some great things coming up we're going to collaborate and do, man. You know, there's a hip-hop show, right? So before we get out of here, I got to ask you, top five rappers dead or alive, who you got? Biggie Smalls. Mm, I like that. Biggie Smalls. He had a, a track out, 10 Crack Commandments. Mm. Even though I don't do that stuff, yeah. I was able to apply the principle to my business. Oh, yeah. All right? I'm with that. Biggie Smalls, one of my favorites. And he spoke life. He told he didn't just rap about money, money, money. Yeah. He showed you what to do with it. Take uh, care of your, your family. Oh, Take yeah. care of your network. Oh, yeah. Both sides of the game. All right. So you got, you got him. Give me four more. All right. So I'll say, uh, uh, what is it? Rock him. Mm-hmm. The uh, dog. Uh, come on now. The dog rock him. Yeah, yeah, rock him. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, rock yeah, him yeah, and yeah. the crew. Um, Buster Rhymes. Mm. Dope. Still doing his thing. Bust a bus. Two more for the people, man. I'm gonna do. Um, don't slip. Looking good easy so far. E, easy E, because that was an error. That was a change. Oh, man. That, that was an error. I, I, I give you that. Yeah, that was an error, man. I give you that. It, it, it got to be Ice Cube next then, because yeah, yeah. Cube write the rhymes Word. that yeah. I say. <laughs> yeah, man. And, of course, man, I guess I can, you know, you know, I guess I stopped listening to music after, um, Stop listening to music after plies, because you know we was being force fed that back in yeah. back in the early twenties. <laughs> yeah. We had no other option but yeah. to listen to my man. So yeah, you know that's that's what it is. Mm, I can dig. <laughs> I can dig that. <laughs> Legendary Kendall Thomas, man. We got more work to do, more yeah, yeah. building to do. All my artists tap into indiehype.com on on your webs on the internet, or you can go on to any app store, Android or Apple. Man, plug in with this brother, man. Very innovative brother, legendary brother. And a great, great asset to the community, man. Big Motion Podcast, exclusive interview. I go by the name of Bezo, Bezo803 on that social media. That's my co-host right here. Yeah, Mikey Dallas, I'm Mikey, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, we'll be that back hurt. again. We'll catch Definitely. y'all next time, y'all. Great.